jumping off the porch like mom's not home. Tell me why the best things feel so wrong. Summer nights, love them how they take so long. What's up, guys? It's Josh, and we're back here with another video. Today is a little bit of a story time, I guess. I'm not, I'm not one to do story time type of videos, but this is a story that a lot of people have been asking about because uh, I didn't really go into a lot of detail about what exactly happened. But as you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, when I was studying abroad in Paris, I had all of my camera and editing equipment stolen from me. It was all in a single backpack. And it was a very tragic event that almost ruined my summer if it wasn't for the generosity of you guys. Inside my backpack was my laptop with all of my footage from the entire trip my Canon 70D DSLR camera with two different lenses, my Sony RX100 point and shoot camera, and like hundreds of dollars worth of like magic gimmicks that I had, that I had purchased and handmade and that are, some of them are just not even replaceable. So it, 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 was, it was a big loss. Basically everything of physical value in my life other than my phone and my wallet was in that backpack. Like to be completely honest, I would have rather had my phone or my wallet stolen. That would have been uh, a lot easier of a time. At least my at least my passport, I left at home. I made a conscious effort to leave my passport at home because I did not want to lose that. That would be a whole entire mess in and of itself. Luckily, you guys pulled through and with the help of a successful GoFundMe, I was able to rebuy some of my gear and get back to making videos for you guys. We haven't completely recovered yet, but we're on our way and we have everything we need right now to keep pumping out these videos, so I'm excited. Regardless, I also received a lot of questions about how this theft actually occurred. And since it's a pretty funny story and I'm still really salty about it, we have this video. So welcome to Storytime with Josh as we recount one of the most unfortunate events to happen to me in the recent future. Yay! As you guys know, I was looking forward to a pretty big collab with a fellow YouTuber from Princeton, and we had just set the date that we were going to meet and film. By the way, if you haven't checked out our collab videos yet, you should definitely do that as soon as possible because not only do they give a lot of great information about Princeton and Yale, but they also answer a lot of your guys' questions about college. So um, I'll leave the link below. Anyways, I think we had decided to film on a Tuesday, which did mean that I had class in the morning. After class finished, I grabbed some lunch with some friends and then decided to do some work in a nearby park. We actually ended up going to Parc de Butchaumont, which if you guys haven't heard of it, is probably one of the craziest and most beautiful parks I've seen in Paris. It looked like something straight out of the movie Avatar. It was absolutely insane. I did have footage of it, but it's gone now, but Google it, it's pretty cool. I'm getting sidetracked, but anyways, the point is that I did not have time to go home to charge my phone. I did swing by my host family's house for like five minutes, but it was just to grab a microphone and a tripod for filming. So I decided to keep my laptop in my bag so I could plug the USB cord into it and charge my phone while I was on the Metro and while we were filming. I also had both cameras in my bag because I have my small camera for vlogging and then I have my big camera for taking pictures and stuff. So those were both in my bag because we're gonna be by the Eiffel Tower. Who knows, might be able to take some pictures, might be able to vlog a little bit. I just wanted to be prepared for anything. Bad idea, Josh. The point is, by some perfect storm of events, all of these big ticket items happened to be in my bag at the same time. I sprinted out of my house towards the metro because I was running late and straight to the Eiffel Tower, which is where we decided to film. We met up, everything was going well, we filmed the first video, and then we decided to change locations for the second video. We walked around the park a little bit and decided on this nice stone bench that had pretty good lighting. We sat down and I had my backpack right next to me on the bench. But when we were framing the shot, I obviously didn't want my backpack next to me in the shot because it's obnoxious. Right next to me on the ground, leaning against the stone pillar that was in between the two benches. You see the bag was like, Right down here, right, right in my peripheral vision, thought everything was good. But you know, we just happened to be filming a YouTube video. Um, one of the only activities I know of that requires intense focus forward onto a lens and complete disregard for anything in your peripherals. Anyways, we finished filming. I was feeling good about the uh, this take. It was going well. We were answering the questions pretty well. I was really excited for the video. I get up, I stretch, I look to my right, and I don't see my backpack. I'm like, wait a second, did it like fall under the bench? So I check under the bench, I'm like, huh, interesting. Is it, did I, did I not set it down? I'm pretty sure I set it down right here. Where'd it go? 
Like, the, the, the thought of theft didn't even register in my head because it seemed so impossible. It was literally within arm's reach of me, sitting in my peripheral vision. Like, how, how would I not have seen it? How would I not have felt it? Um, but eventually, we, Nick and I came to the conclusion that theft was the only thing that made sense and that my, my backpack had been stolen. I didn't believe how somebody could come so close to us, sneak right behind us, and snatch my backpack from right next to me. Not only that, but Nick was getting up like every two or three minutes to frame the shot. So somebody had to have been watching us because they didn't want to come and try to steal a backpack and then Nick get up and frame the shot. So here's your answer. These thieves in Europe, they're professionals. They saw two stupid teenagers filming a YouTube video in the middle of Champ de Mar and scouted out the location of our gear. I was wearing a Yale t-shirt with salmon shorts. Nick was wearing a Princeton sweatshirt. It doesn't get any more American than that. Probably sat there watching us for 20 minutes, started to notice the patterns of Nick getting up, checking the framing, us filming the video, and observed us, make sure that they were safe, scouted out the location of my gear right next to me, seeing that they were filming, and then this son of a snuck up right behind me and stole my gear. Now I know what you're thinking. He must have shown up in the footage. Nope. Like I said, there's a giant stone pillar in between the two benches, which the thief must have taken note of and literally must have gotten right behind so he wouldn't have been in the frame and reached down and snatched it. It's, it was just ridiculous. We scrubbed through the footage afterwards and could not find even the slightest evidence of something. I'm just blown away by the extent that some people will go to to steal and ruin someone's day. So basically we wandered the area looking for it but I knew I wouldn't be able to find it. Um, I tried to talk to some security guards but of course they were no help. Basically I was just freaking out on the verge of tears, running around the Eiffel Tower like a, like an idiot. Big shout out to Nick for staying with me and helping me out because I don't know if I would have been able to do that by myself. Anyways, once I accepted that there was no way that we are going to find the thief, I immediately routed myself to the nearest police station. Except there was a problem. The, the Tuesday night that we had decided to film was actually the semi-finals of the World Cup, which France was in. Uh, so basically the streets were completely empty. Everyone was grouped around these bars and all the police stations were closed. I even tried going to a second police station, but that was also closed, so we just ended up like watching the last 10 minutes of the game at some random bar, which was absolutely crazy by the way. Obviously France won, so the streets began to immediately erupt in madness. As I immediately became soaked in beer, I don't think there was a, there was a full drink in that entire bar, um, I witnessed a car crash in the middle of the street and a bunch of people ran and charged a like public transport bus and it almost flipped over. I may have lost, I may have lost all my gear, but witnessing that made my night eh, a little bit better. The bad part was, was that my phone died. So it took me like over three hours to get home because of all the crazed fans on the Metro. The Metro had to keep stopping. Um, I didn't even know what Metro routes to take because, because I couldn't route using my phone. I got home and realized that my phone charger was in my backpack that was lost which meant that I had to ravage through my host family's house without a little phone flashlight and they didn't have a lot of lights in their house trying to find a phone charger because I needed to plug my phone in and call my parents and inform everyone of the situation. It was a mess. It was, it was a mess. It was just a series of a lot of unfortunate events leading to a devastating consequence. People always warned me about theft and pickpocketing in Paris. They said, oh, it's one of the most dangerous cities. And I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. But I didn't think it could happen to me. I followed all the instructions they told me, you know, don't wear earbuds on the metro, wear your backpack on the front of you, keep your wallet in your sock. I was doing all of that. I was being super careful, but you know, it just takes, it takes one moment. These guys are professionals. They're going to get your stuff no matter what. So <laughs> don't seem obnoxiously American and leave your backpack sitting next to you while you're filming a YouTube video by the Eiffel Tower. Uh, so that's, that's the moral of the story. Obviously there's a lot more lessons that I have to learn from this and maybe I'll make a video about that in the future, but it was, at the end of the day, it was just a really, really unfortunate situation. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me rant about this because I definitely wanted to get it off my chest. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a thumbs up down below. It helps me and supports the channel a lot more than you think. Comment down below any questions, comments, concerns, or future video ideas. I will try to respond to you. If you're new, subscribe if you want to it. And I will see you guys in the next video.
like my girls that way That's why she from Europe and I put her on the display Don't got a Rari, but I'm still trying to drag race Cause this my area and I know all the back ways If you can't take a joke, then you rotten If you wanna get the smoke, boy